All right, with code. Uh, my name is Joy. I'm a curriculum developer here at Code HS. I'm also joined by Alex, who's also another curriculum developer at Code HS, and some other team members that you'll get to know over the course of today's session. Um, we are part of the team that creates all the courses, exercises, and projects you see on our platform. Um, we'll get started in just a moment, um, but before we do, uh, please feel free to introduce yourself in the chat, tell us where you're from, what grade you're in, and if you have any experience with coding. I'm seeing some participants from Indiana. Hello from Indiana. I'm seeing some Python uh, coders. I'm seeing some ninth graders, some seventh graders. Great. Some 10th graders. Thank you so much for joining us. I see we have some beginners and also some with a little bit of experience. Great. Wow, I'm seeing someone who has experience in Python, C++, JavaScript, and C Sharp. And someone who likes to code a lot. All right, well, in today's session, uh, we're going to be learning from uh, the beginning. So if you have some experience, that's great. And if you're also new to coding, uh, no worries. Um, we'll give you a great introduction so that you can get started with coding. Uh, just a bit of housekeeping. Uh, feel free to drop some questions in our Q&A section. Um, if they come up during the presentation, um, I'm going to be turning off the chat for now. Um, so again, feel free to use the Q&A section uh, to ask your questions as they come up. Okay, so here's what we'll cover in the hour. First, we'll start with a guest speaker, um, Rich Yasinha. And then after we'll learn about digital art and you will work through an activity. And then at the end, we'll wrap up, share some of your creations, answer some questions and give you next steps. So I'd like to first introduce our speaker. Um, this is Richa. She is a software engineer at Amazon. Uh, she previously worked on some exciting pro projects, including coding Alexa skills uh, to allow the use of geolocation coordinates. And she's currently working on Amazon search. I want everyone to give a warm welcome to Richa and also feel free to add questions that you have for her in the chat and we'll answer them live after her chat. Yeah. Hello everyone. Um, it's great to see everyone here and I'm really excited um, to like talk to you virtually. So a little bit, so Joy already introduced me. Yes, I work with Amazon. I have been with Amazon for over four years now. Um, prior to that, I was working as a software developer in India. Um, so I just wanted to like talk about how I got into coding and maybe that can help you in figuring out if you like it or not like it and what to do if you want to like get into coding. So I actually got into coding as a part of my curriculum. So I started uh, writing like programs in C and C++ in the beginning. And initially it felt really difficult, uh, but um, as and when like I practiced more and I actually like maths a lot, mathematics as a subject. And I realized there is some sort of call correlation when it comes to like applying logic to my programs and the mathematical cal calculations we generally do in life. So that actually helped me in getting better as a coder. So I started coding in my grad school uh, as an undergrad. And then uh, after that, I kept on like doing some sort of like uh, programs where uh, um, like learning on like how to do this exercise, just using coding, how to, um, for example, how to like make. So I was work, I was graduating in electrical and electrical at that point of time. Um, and there are certain simulations you would want to see about like how your like how this thing works when you turn your switch on and your light goes on, like how those things happen. So you can even like work using code, like using blocks and things in MATLAB, which is one other platform. So I like started understanding more on the logical aspects and also 
figured out okay what we just do on our like um id like the coding environments i realized that it's not only based in the coding environment it's also about how there is like a practical application to each and every aspect and how you can program various practical applications in your life using programming and uh, that kept me interested and um, i actually went ahead and did my masters in computer engineering there i got a like understanding of programming more and just i'm just going to like say here that i feel like i'm still learning there is a lot to learn even when someone comes and say that oh i know these many languages um it's just not the end of the world like people can start at the same time at the same place on a different programming language uh, even when someone has like lots of experience and the other does not uh that does not mean that the person who doesn't have any experience can't learn so i have seen in my whole uh, like 10 years or 12 years of life as a coder every day i learn a new thing every day there is a new practical application which requires logical thinking and at that point of time you you try to figure out how this thing works every time there is a new programming language it takes like some effort from people even who are like experienced coders to learn that so and it's in continuous evolving field um it helps you it motivate it keeps you motivated to learn more um so yeah i am open to questions if you have any i don't know how it went but yeah thank you so much uh if you have any questions for richa feel free to um enter them in our q and a um and while we wait for our participants to enter any questions um i have a couple of questions for you um yeah. so could you share um maybe what is one of your favorite projects or a program that you're currently working on okay yeah so um i'd say one of my favorite projects was the geolocation thing which you mentioned in our slide that's one of the reasons one of the reasons why it's my favorite because it had no boundaries like it was somewhere when someone just gave me a statement saying that we need to program alexa to have a geolocation capability very similar to how we use apple maps or google maps how do you say that if you have an alexa device can you say that take me from point a to point b and without like and at every point the alexa keeps on guiding you like it does like waze does or maps does in any way um and it's one of my favorites because i was told that i can use anything i want it does not have to be limited by what amazon is doing or what alexa team is doing or what some other team is doing you can figure out what how things work with maps there are a lot of open source things so just for the people here open source means like there are certain things which many companies invent and then they like make it theirs you can't use it but then there are certain things which many people or the community invent and they put it out for the community so i got to use lots of open source tools and i also got to like contribute like give back to the society big give back to the community uh, through what i experienced uh, and what i had feedbacks on those tools which i used so and yeah the end product was like i could show like how at back then uh, they were trying to integrate alexa with cars uh, now it's already integrated so at that point of time i had a working prototype with like a proper raspberry pi it's like a very fascinating uh, chip kind of a device uh, where you can just say that alexa take me from seattle to uh, 7th avenue to seattle 10th avenue or something and it will give you directions throughout the way so it was really nice very cool um i see two questions in the chat um so what type of languages um are you using at amazon like what languages do you program with okay so uh, amazon has plethora of projects and many projects use languages they want to work on uh, with so for example if someone is working on the front end side Uh, many people end up working with java uh, like angular java node java javascripts 
um it's and then there are people who work on like typescript javascript and then there are people who have worked on c c++ c sharp java scala python kotlin um in my experience i have got to work with like typescript node uh java python and scala till now very cool um and we'll answer one last question um so as a woman in tech um what is your experience has it been hard to be a coder in a mostly male dominated workplace very good question it's actually yes it is tough at times uh we as females are very soft spoken mostly and we don't like tend to interrupt people but we get interrupted a lot uh for what we have to say so it takes time to like groom yourself to make sure that you make your point you stand up to what you believe in and uh the thing is getting correct mentors uh and that's really nice like i realize that in a year within amazon i realized how dynamic this company is there are times when i am just like interrupted even when i am correct i am like my i get like my credit due credit i am not getting the due credits which i'm supposed to get uh, and that point of time i got a very good mentor she guided me on how to deal with these things and uh, she helped me throughout like okay if you have to speak up that does not mean that you have to have evidence for everything you can speak up from the mind you believe in you don't need evidences not every person in the tech world have evidences on what they speak so i started like believing in myself more and then talk more uh prove my points more and then also talking to the leadership like talking bringing this up to your managers and bringing this up to the people who take care of you uh in terms of like managing and giving you projects uh this helps a lot like talking to them and telling them that this is what i'm feeling and currently women in tech um like there are a lot of to every person within amazon um and not only for women for every kind of diverse community and how people who are not from those communities should actually figure out and like listen to people more uh from diverse communities and give them more chances so it's growing up and it's happening um but yeah currently i feel like yeah it's in a better shape now thank you awesome again i just wanted to say thank you for joining us today and to speaking to our students and sharing your uh experience at amazon and with learning computer science thank you uh do let me know you can drop your questions to joy and i can like answer them later uh if there are any and yeah happy coding thank you all right so uh before we get started on our activity for today's hour of code i first wanted to talk a little bit about how computer science and coding is being used to create art um more specifically digital art So by definition art is the expression of human creative skill and imagination. Uh traditionally when we think about art we think about it in the form such as a sculpture or a painting. So traditional pieces of art um use physical mediums like a canvas, paint, paint brushes uh to bring a masterpiece to life. But the term art is an umbrella term. Uh meaning that it encompasses many different types of creative expressions. uh which can vary in appearance and format beyond the traditional way we see here on the slide. Digital art is a form of art where artists create their work on a computer. Uh the world of digital art has grown ex exponentially with more and more artists choosing to create and express themselves digitally. Today, many artists even use software and learn how to code to create this new form of art. So today, we will be exploring the world of digital art and coding through creative coding. Creative coding is a type of computer programming in which the goal is to create something expressive. There are several different programming languages um and coding libraries that can be used to generate these different genres of art. Uh in this example, uh this is art that was created using a programming language you may have heard of called JavaScript. Uh today we will be using a similar language that uses JavaScript in the back end um but it's beginner friendly 
So you'll be dragging and dropping blocks that serve as the code for your program. And we'll see an example of this next. So today you'll be using code to generate a popular form of art, a meme. Yes, memes are considered art. Memes combine images, shapes with text to convey a message. And technically that is a form of art. With memes, we can convey an array of emotions, a moment in time and thoughts to other individuals. So today you will create a meme in a coding block environment. Let's get started. So for the first part of the activity, I would like for you all to look at an example meme. Um, so while you're exploring this meme, I would like you to try to modify things and to drag and drop uh, the different blocks that are available. You can do things like trying to replace the text or even the image or background of the meme. And then you can run your program to see those changes. So let's see how you can get there. So there are two ways to get to the activity. Firstly, if you have an account on CodeHS, be sure to log into your CodeHS account before navigating to the website codehs.com slash hoc underscore art. And then you're gonna navigate to the third icon. And I'll walk through this in just a moment. Um, and secondly, if you don't have a CodeHS account, no worries. You can go to the same website, codehs.com slash hoc underscore art and select the second activity. So you're gonna to go to this website and you're gonna select the meme generator activity. And you should see this window. And if you click explore this example, this is how you know you're in the right space. Great. So I'm gonna give you about 10 minutes to explore the coding environment. Feel free to modify things. And as questions come up, feel free to drop them in the chat. Sure, uh, there was a question about uh, pasting the link into the chat. Someone from our team will paste it. Thank you.
All right, we have a question. How do you upload an image into CodeHS? Very good question. Uh, so you can go to, so here we see that there is an image URL. So if you're using an image from Google, you can paste the URL to the image here. Um, otherwise, if you click more, click upload and upload a file, uh, it'll generate a CodeHS link for you. And then you could paste it here um, into the background image URL block. And we'll go over this in just a moment. All right, we have about five more minutes. Again, feel free to drop any questions you have into the chat. Uh, there's a question on what we should be doing. Uh, so until the timer runs out, feel free to try to modify the meme. Um, if you have any observations, feel free to share those. And if you have any questions, feel free to pop them into the Q&A.
All righty. Um, I hope you learned a lot from exploring on your own. Uh, we didn't want to give away too much upfront so that you had some things that you could learn on your own. Um, a lot of time when you're learning how to develop things uh, and learning how to code, um, you'll have to learn a lot of things on your own um, and see how things work together. Uh, great. So now we're going to walk through an example and I'll turn things over to Alice. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Joy. And I'll start sharing screen. Okay, cool. Hello, everyone. And yeah, just like Joy said, I hope you had a fun time exploring uh, how to just that example of how, how to uh, change images or maybe change the sizes of, of the meme. Uh, but now you're going to be creating your own. Um, but before we get into that, we'll first go over some of the coding blocks that you have available uh, while you're creating your meme. So you'll want to navigate to the make a meme exercise, uh, which is uh, sort of that Third one, there's a little star icon at the bottom, but we'll show it better right now. And you'll see this uh, description page. Uh, for now, we could just click get started. And then you'll present it with already some, some blocks already on the in the editor. And so we can run this and we see that we have a meme already on there. Uh, so when you're working uh, in this editor, everything that you do will go inside of a block called the collage block. And if we zoom in a little bit, uh, we have already some blocks in here. And what we can do is click and drag blocks inside of there. Um, that's, we can have as many as we want. And then uh, for now, what we can do is also to get rid of them, we can slide them over here to this trash can area to get rid of them. And so we'll drop those in there and then we'll run our canvas again. And then so we can have a blank canvas to make our own meme. Now, let's let's start by adding our background. And so over here on the left-hand side, we have the background tools. So if we click there, uh, we'll see all of the blocks that we have available to make a background. And so we have a way to make a background to just be a solid color. We have another way to just make it a CodeHS sort of stock image. This is just ones that CodeHS provides. And then you can also upload your own uh, image uh, with this block here. So we'll sort of step through this uh, one by one and see how uh, adding all of these different backgrounds look. So the first one I'll add is the background color. So I'll just select it from here and then again, drop it inside of the collage block. And then now I can, man, uh, I can click on this color here and then this menu of more colors shows up. And so I can then select a different color that I would want. I'll just select this purplish color. And then now if I run my code again, uh, we see that the canvas, the whole canvas turns into that, that color that I chose. And so uh, it's pretty, pretty cool. And then let's see, so we saw that one, we can again, slide that one to the trash, and get rid of it. And we'll go back into our background tools and then we can use one of the code HS provided images. So uh, we'll put this one in there next. And then we can see once we click on this image, I'll zoom in more. We have a bunch of images that we can choose from. So a lot of cats, a lot of dogs, um, and you can keep scrolling. You can find one that you like. Uh, I'll go with this little guy right here. And then now if I click run again, we see that 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 purple image gets replaced by this, this little dog right here. So pretty cool. Uh, let's get rid of him, them as well. And clear that. And so now we're going to show how we can get a, a one of our own images uploaded on here. So I already have one downloaded to my computer. Uh, and so to do that, we'll want to go to, again, we go to background tools. We'll just have our block ready there. And Joyce sort of showed us already how to do it, but I'll do it again. Uh, we want to go to more and then we'll go to upload down here. And then we go to upload file. And then here uh, you, you should see sort of your, com your computer, it'll, it'll show you a window on its own. And then you should see like whatever files you have. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see this, but also like this one. And then cool. All right, so it gets uploaded and we get a little preview here and it looks good. And then all we have to do is just click on this, uh, this link here and, and, and it should automatically copy it for you. Uh, but if not, you could do the right click and then copy or, uh, a control C. And then once you have the file, uh, cop the URL copied, you can go over here to the code block and then paste it. And then you hit run. 
and then you should see your image on the on the canvas. So that's pretty cool. And then, okay, so that's it for the background uh, blocks. We have those three options, uh, but we also have other blocks uh, for shapes. So we can add uh, circles, we can add rectangles, and we can add text. Uh, so let's try adding a circle to this, this meme. Uh, and again, so we'll want to add it to our collage block. And you can look out for the yellow highlight, and that'll show you where exactly you're adding your, your blocks. So we'll add it there. And then if we run this code, we see our little circle. And by default, it's just a, a, a black circle. But we can change a lot of its values. So we see that we have the radius, uh, which will change the size, and then the X and Y positions, where we can place it anywhere on the canvas where we would like, and then all, also the color. So uh, let's just make it a little bit bigger so it can be easier to see. I'll make it size 50. All right, so now it did grow. It's it's a lot bigger now. Um, and then we can also move it. Let's move it more towards the center of the, of the canvas. So right now it's at X position 25. And since we want to move it to the right, we need to increase the number. So to move to the right, let's just say we put it at 125. And that should move us more to the right. And it works. So now uh, it's a little bit easier to see, but it's still sort of cut off at the top. And so now we want to change the Y position. And also, by increasing the value of the Y position, uh, we can make it lower. So if we make 25 to say 200, it'll bring down our circle. And there it goes, it's a lot closer to the eye now. And then lastly, we can just see how changing the color looks. Uh, we can click again, this little block. We get another menu for colors and then we can make it in that color. We'll run it and then uh, there's our circle. So there's a lot of cool stuff we can make with this as well. And you could continue to add more more circles or rectangles, uh, any amount of shapes that you would like. And so yeah, let's get rid of that circle. And then next, uh, we can show how we can add text, uh, which I think is important for memes. So we'll add that in there. And the text has a lot of different options as well. Uh, first is the the word or the sentence that, that you're going to say. It'll it'll you'll need like one uh, text block per per line. Uh, so for this one, let's just make it say coding, and then we can change the font. Uh, let's do Comic Sans. We'll keep the size the same, and then let's just see where the position where it positions it for us. Okay, not too bad. A little bit on the eyes, kind of hard to see. So we'll move it a little bit to the left. Now to make it move to the left, we need to lower uh, the X position number. So how about we put, I don't know, let's do like 70. All right, that looks good. And then now we want to add uh, more uh, text. So I think we could add a few more words to this meme. Uh, I think this meme always has a wow. So we'll add a wow to it. And then we want to keep it the same. Uh, we'll keep it comic sense. And then we'll move this one a little bit lower than our coding uh, text. So we want to increase the Y position. Let's make this like 80. And then, yeah, since we want it lower, we want a bigger Y position. And we'll run that. Okay, it's looking good, kind of where we want it. And then let's just add one more text, uh, just for fun. Add another text block there. This one will say, so fun. And then we'll keep the font the same. And then next position, let's move it a little bit to the right. So we have about 300. And then 400 Y position. We want to kind of lower than the rest. Okay, and that looks good. Let's see. Um, yeah, so for the next uh, few minutes, uh, you'll you'll have the opportunity to work on your own uh, meme and create your own. And so what you'll need to do is select the exercise, which is make a meme. Uh, there's some instructions on there uh, written for you to follow. And then you create your meme using uh, various blocks, uh, whichever ones you want, you know, have fun with it. You can add some text and some shapes, and then you'll run your program to, to generate your meme. And then afterwards, we'll have a little showcase where uh, we'll take a look at some of the memes that you all generated. Alex, can you please show um, how to get the upload URL again? So how to upload a file and use that URL in your code? Sure, yeah. So you, you want to go to the, yeah, so make sure you have the set background image URL block. Uh, and then you want to go to more. 
and then you'll go to upload over here. So it's towards the bottom of that menu. And then once you click that, you'll hit upload file. And then you should get a, a pop up from your computer. And then you'll just select the file that you want to to upload. And then it should show you like a preview here and then generate a URL for you, which you can just click and then uh, that automatically copies it and then you can just paste it in this block. Cool. Any other questions? All right, awesome. So I'll start the timer now and then, uh, yeah, excited to see everybody's, everybody's needs.
All right, everyone. So we have about five more minutes left uh, to work on our memes, and then we'll have some time to take a look at some of the cool memes everyone created.
All right, everyone. I hope you have fun creating your memes. Um, I'm now going to turn it over to Joy so that we can take a look at some of the, the memes you all created. Awesome. I hope you guys had fun with that today. Uh, so now we're going to take some time to share uh, some of the memes you guys created today. So uh, if you're logged into a Code HS account, uh, one way that you could share your meme with us is by pasting the URL to your program. So the way that you can access the share link is you can click more in the menu and then you'll click share. And then we gave you guys access to paste your link into the chat and we'll share some of them. Um, if you are joining us today and you did not have a CodeHS account, um, teachers, you can create a Google doc um, and share that with your students and your students should be able to copy and paste their image into the Google Doc. So again, if you would like to share your creation today, feel free to drop your link into the chat and we'd love to showcase them. And of course, it's totally optional. It's up to you if you'd like to share. All right, I'm laughing because I, I looked at one of these memes. Um, I will share the one posted in the chat. Okay, let's take a look. Ooh, it's one of the Kermit memes. Me, what a cute dog, inner me, take it and run. Same, I love dogs. <laughs> nice. Any others? Okay, let's take another look at this one. <laughs> another dog one, and you run out of hot. <laughs> this one, oops. One sec. Oh, that was the same one. Any others? One second. I see a track. Oh, fuck it. All right. Awesome. Yes, tractors definitely would take me by surprise, too. Anyone else want to share? Okay, thank you so much again for participating today. Uh, but if you'd like to continue working on your hour of code um, and you didn't finish, uh, you can just come back to the link that you navigated to today at codehs.com slash hoc underscore art. Um, and if you'd like to create something new, you can visit that link again. Also, congratulations for completing your hour of code uh, today. Uh, you can feel free to share your masterpiece on social media. Uh, you can use hashtags, uh, our code, hashtag read, write code, hashtag code HS. Uh, you'll also see that you'll have the option to print your certificate. Um, and there's also a link for you to explore um, some other hour of code activities that we have on our platform. Again, we'd like to thank you so much for attending today's webinar. Uh, we hope that you learned a lot uh, during today's session and you continue coding. Uh, we'd love to hear your feedback. If you have any feedback, feel free to scan the QR code um, listed on the screen uh, to tell us how today's webinar went. 
Um, otherwise, uh, we look forward to uh, exploring coding with you again and hope to see what you create. Thank you. Take care.